I don't think that you can call an entire um, a, a category of sexual uh, preference mm-hmm. nonsense. Yes. <laughs> you, you, like literally, you just can't do that. It's like me. We this whole. There's, I'm sure there's a, a whole group of people who love, who adhere to sexual monogamy. Hi guys, Maruki Muni here. It's Lydia KM. And we're back again with another episode of The Messy In Between. It's, it's definitely, definitely TMI. TMI. Guys, we need to tell you guys something, and we like this to be a communal, An open, op- honest conversation. conversation. Thank you. So we feel like when we don't sing, sometimes we are not able to like bring out as much energy. So petition to bring the singing back again. Right. I'm not with her in the bring back the singing. I'm just like in our last episode. Was it our last episode? Yeah, which was a couple a few weeks ago. It yeah. was like we're like it's definitely TMI. But the second you do, it's <laughs> definitely TMI. TMI. You yeah. have no it's choice. Definitely TMI. Yeah. You, you know, I miss it. This Done. is our podcast, Lydia. We don't have to ask anyone. Why are we scared, yeah. are we scared we of can say, <laughs> No, Lydia, if you want to sing, sing. Listen, you're yeah. the one footing the bill here. We're singing, guys. We're singing from Let's now on. Yeah. It, it, it brings like an energy, you know, an excitement. Exactly. Anyway, welcome back to another episode of TMI, a.k.a. The Messy In Between podcast. We've had a break for about two weeks now, and that was because planning the life experience was grueling but we know we've already you've already seen the content you already see how good it was how dope it was our special guest it was amazing <laughs> first of all thank you to everyone who came thank you as we are recording this so the event has not happened but as thank you guys thank you to everyone who made it so special everyone. it was the best day of our lives the best day of our lives <laughs> i know it was the best day I, of my for life for sure for the sure best. i know that it was yeah. the best you yeah. know i was telling zach this morning saying yeah. i've been feeling um anxious but the closer we get to the event the more now it's like the anxiety turns to excitement especially yeah. when now everything is like now we know what we're doing everything yeah. is sorted and whatever it just yeah. feels like oh my god yeah so i you know by the time you guys are watching this it was just like we keep looking back at the pictures of like wow, wow. we looked amazing wow. we looked, it was i know for sure i know that for that sure. one death given death it was sure. amazing thank you guys yeah. so much for supporting for buying tickets for coming it was our biggest one yeah yeah double the last year's capacity crazy crazy we already have you guys asking us for more events you know since the event everyone has just been asking when is the whoa, next one when whoa, is the next whoa, one whoa, whoa, when is whoa, the next whoa, one slow down. And we, are, we, we are gonna we, are, we hear you guys we hear you we are thinking of maybe having another one before the year is up yeah I'm I feel I yeah. feel so. You feel so, right? Definitely. Def, yeah, Christmas special. Mm-hmm. Look out for that. Yeah. Already if you've been feeling the FOMO of having missed this last one, already prepare for that one. Come prepare on, prepare in one. advance. Yeah, exactly. it's going to be a smaller intimate one. One, yeah. I like we've been doing this for 3 years, so I know your process. Mm-hmm. Like I know your process. You are going to panic throughout. Yeah. And then once everything, once you have all your eyes dotted and your t's crossed mm. then you're you're calm exactly. so i i, I know the, the process is yeah, fine thank you. whereas for me i'm already kind of like blind faith yeah it's just like yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be great and thank god because if we were both like me it would be disaster too much. if we were both like much. you too much also it's just yeah, like so yeah we, we need someone who's gonna bring us to dot our eyes and someone mm-hmm. who's gonna always believe it's gonna be fine anyway. everything's gonna be okay <laughs> actually that's it's the perfect it's a match made in heaven actually perfect yeah. combo. and we took the break because it was just like as lydia said we it had been like literally two months actually it'd been like a really long time like maybe three months of planning for that event and mm. it was like a lot goes in the background of planning events it's not like food and drinks and like yeah. performances where we're talking about our hair our makeup yeah. where people are sitting how people are sitting each vendor giveaways stop. Q&A stop oh yeah <laughs> Like, okay, we have it's, it's not, not done yet. yet it's not done yet yeah but we've already thought of all those things <sighs> yeah. and by the way the, one of the best actually the best thing we did this time mm. is that this is the first time we did a live experience with an event planner never again we'll be back to that ghetto <laughs> Listen, never again me, I'm like i'd rather i'll say i'll sacrifice the money for hair and makeup period let who is it? Get the, i'll who, do my own makeup thank you i'll <laughs> get an outfit from my closet and i'll wear that than to but an have event, event planner <gasps> Also, I decided to go away for a month during this. That was this lovely. Situation. That and was it's great. great. But that you know, great. yeah, it's because mm. usually we do at the end of July. So I wouldn't, yeah. I would expect that would be like my holiday after the event. But now because of protests and stuff like that, we pushed it back. Mm. So now I ended up not be. 
without an event, no, we wouldn't have done we it. I don't think I'd have gone. Definitely not have done no, it. No, that would Although, have been abandonment for sure. <laughs> Although actually, like while you were there, it's not you weren't like not present in the planning. I feel like you were still I like was. presentish. So but was, you know, once we're here feel, together, I always feel like more Absolutely. like we're more together. Yeah, we're more definitely. But anyway, we love you guys. We're we are growing. We're getting better mm-hmm. and bigger. Any other ideas? If you have ideas of how we can keep growing this mm-hmm. podcast, this brand, our events, you guys let us know. Exactly. This is a pro creative experience. Thank you. Which mm-hmm. other podcast is doing events? Events like ours. I don't know. Trip. Like I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to toot I, my I own don't horn. want to, but yeah, toot, 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 toot guys. Toot, toot. Yeah, <laughs> this was also the first time that we made like some money from the event. <laughs> Hall- no, no, last year we made some money. We did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Oh, and we even split it. Yeah. Hand. Wow, wow, yeah, that was but nice. this year, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, it's today now it's now we are now in today mm-hmm. we're now in today mm-hmm. and today um a month ago we did a really incredible um episode mm-hmm. with Morris Matheka who is a sex therapist and the vagina whisperer as we've come to know him now mm-hmm. if you haven't watched that episode please go watch it because this episode is actually about that episode mm-hmm. you guys had a lot to, to say. say a lot to say <laughs> we will be having him back again he's so open to have another a part two three four even someone's yeah. like three four five yeah yes he's Calm open <laughs> but for now we wanted to just kind of have a conversation mm-hmm. about you guys's feedback what your response was mm-hmm. because i feel like that's actually episode worthy exactly so yeah how, let's and also just even our our own, own. cuz most of the time yeah. when we speak we said three words in that episode yeah as, most as a lot of you pointed out wes. in the comments exactly <laughs> wes. Wes. <laughs> Where? Yeah, yeah, what did you so think? So I feel like I haven't watched the episode back, but I definitely still remember being in that room mm-hmm. and having my edges taken away from me. For you know, sure. Like just they, they just escorted out back. the door. Mm-hmm. Um, and since then, Lydia and I have actually had like a few conversations about like some of the things that we discussed, mm-hmm. some of the views that Morris expressed, some of the um concepts, I guess, that he introduced. Mm-hmm. And obviously, just like a lot of you have noted in the comments, it's like this is one person's view yeah. that he was mm-hmm. expressing. It's not that it's the gospel truth. It's not that now everybody should live that way. Mm-hmm. And definitely there are some of the things that we spoke about in that episode that are not necessarily like now I'm going to go and change my whole life mm-hmm. and like tell my husband now we are non-monogamous mm-hmm. from today because yeah. Maurice said mm-hmm. it's kind of just like I mean, it was good to hear. Yeah, it's a good someone perspective. Else's views. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. One of the comments that someone said was why he got someone said, "Please note that much of what has been said on this show is someone's opinion mm-hmm. and not gospel truth. Yeah, you also have your own opinion and truth. Mm-hmm. Listen, but know where you draw the line. Yeah, um, yeah. So, what would you say about as far as like some of the views that that um we discussed that we felt were problematic? Okay, so first of all, mm-hmm. generally speaking, um, mm-hmm. I'm of the view that it is it is his opinion is like one view Mm. what i um generally speaking what i saw is that he gave us a male perspective like Mm. a male perspective from like what he's experienced based on like actual experience he's not talking Mm. about himself Mm. he's seeing this pattern because he works with people yeah and so he sees some of these things coming up over and over again so Mm. i think he's giving an insight into a reality that maybe we might not all be wanting to accept but it's kind of happening maybe not for everyone but it's happening um and one of the things is this TikTok that I saw and this lady basically said that men constantly shape themselves around getting women. Mm-hmm. Men know that they need to get women and they want to get women. Yeah. So they tend to do things to get women. But women aren't like that. Yeah. Women tend to be like, he needs to like me as I am. We don't listen to what men want and decide if men want to be spoken to like this. This is a way to communicate to a man we don't think mm-hmm. about it that way mm-hmm. whereas men do men would know they'll buy flowers they don't want to but they know you like you want them so yeah. they do that way so i feel like there's um there's a value that i saw in that because to be honest if you are relating with a man from us from like now sex a sex perspective you want to know what, mm-hmm. m- what how are men thinking about sex what can i add so that i can speak his language so i saw value from that perspective as well yeah. The bits which I felt like were a bit is because we have a young audience, right? And I'm thinking about like 20-year-old Lydia and Murugi just like coming up confused as hell about what sex is, what pleasure is, like mm. all of that. To have such a, um, will I say animalistic? <laughs> well, yeah, you? literally. Animalistic. Masimba, Mafisi. Masimba, you know, yeah. to have such an, an animalistic yeah. introduction to like sex and sexuality and 
it being so heavily leaning on speaking to a man mm -hmm. on how sex is for a man i'm a bit worried about that because i feel like women despite the fact that we do want to be in tune with what men are saying and how they think about sex i also want us to have our own voice and our own language around that mm -hmm. so i feel like when you're young and impressionable and i think maybe that's why that comment was made about like it's just your it's one person's opinion yeah. is that you could easily grasp that and just think oh this, this is, is a way to week. do it and now let's go to do this and now i'm looking for i'm a simba and it could it could go so much and because he's so convicted like we are as well when we give our exactly. opinion it can't seem like the gospel truth yeah. yeah i i definitely i agree with you 100 <laughs> yeah. percent. i think there was a point where he did i mean when he talks about like teaching women how to squirt and mm. you know all this it's like there is like some focus on sex women's on pleasure. women's I like pleasure that. yeah there definitely. was exactly so mm -hmm. there was there is some element mm -hmm. of that but for the most part i guess either because he is a man yeah. or like maybe the the elements of like the way sex is structured in the african context mm -hmm. it seems very problematic for men specifically yeah because obviously it's just like if you all want to be non-monogamous mm -hmm. then growing up in a monogamous society can feel problematic mm -hmm. um there's something that i shared with lydia it was a post actually that he has up i think it's still on his instagram you can go and check um and basically he said over 90 percent of married people subscribe to monogamy but do not adhere to the rules 70 percent of couples are mismatched 70 percent of marriages end in separation or divorce if the above were a business model would you invest your answer no is it is draining the next slide said it is draining to have an insecure partner luckily masimba does not subscribe to this nonsense of sexual monogamy mm -hmm. so that's problematic to me in many ways <laughs> why For, so first it's like masimba is like obviously masimba is like the it's like that's the cornerstone of what how we are all experiencing sex. It's like a man wants to be a masimba and women want to be with a masimba. Where where is even the language for women for true? women? Yeah. Is that where even is even true? like a, a woman who is like uh who is like I mean in charge of her own sexuality? What do we call her? A what? I don't know. We don't even have language for that one. Mm -hmm. So why is it just it's just the, the language for what the men are? Mm -hmm. That's one. Number two, I don't think that you can call an entire um a, a category of sexual uh Please. preference mm. nonsense yes. <laughs> you, you, like literally you just can't do that it's like me we this whole this i'm sure there's a, a whole group of people who love who adhere to sexual monogamy maybe the ones who are problematic are the ones who he as he's saying all these people they say that they are monogamous but then they end up actually cheating mm. and maybe what then the conversation needs to be is like do people actually believe in monogamy mm. not to say that it's nonsense mm. it's just like maybe you someone is pretending to believe in monogamy but yeah. they don't actually believe in monogamy and mm. that's why you end up in a monogamous relationship mm. but you're cheating all the time yeah but i don't think we can go around and say this is nonsense that to me is like saying like lgbtq this guy this is nonsense what is this about like yeah. boys and boys being together and girls and girls being together you can't do that yeah. just because i don't believe in it i can't now start calling it nonsense yeah that to me was problematic and then also the fact that you're saying we have a young audience they are very impressionable mm -hmm. and for me especially the point there was a point where he was saying about how for him like sex sex is basically a lifestyle it's like he wake up sex. It's like sex is on at the forefront of his mind, which makes sense because obviously it's that's like, how he makes a living. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we, we can't. That's not everyone is not like that. I don't think that's true for it's, a lot. Actually, for I think it's for people, most people. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. But you know, now when we are talking from now, mm -hmm. in the, the the problem with the dynamic of that conversation we were having with him is that we are women. Yep. So now when you're just like no, nah, and he says no, men are like that. Impossible. And then there's nothing you can say because you are not living the male experience. Yeah. You know. So I I think there's I think in a short in a nutshell, just mm -hmm. even before we dive into the Comments, specifics of what yeah. people said mm. is that that is just one perspective and there are many other perspectives around sex around monogamy around um polygamy there are many perspectives so you just see what fits but it's good to know that this one exists too and you might run into a man like him yeah. so don't fall on the ground when you do because now you know that they do exist exactly and it's fine for them to exist it's up to you if you prescribe to that too yeah. yeah, and and let's keep that in mind because some people are so poor saying about how like you've shared this with your man and so you want him to watch. And then me, I was actually thinking to myself, like right now, would do I want my man to be a masimba? Yeah. I don't think so. Can you handle because, a masimba? Yeah. And me, I already said, because <laughs> I told you that um, I said in that episode where this guy was kind of like just so upfront, like he just wants to have sex mm. with me. And it was like, there was something that felt like, 
my vag was twinkling a little bit, but I was also kind of afraid. It just felt too <laughs> upfront. In the same way, if I sit in front of somebody and they told me, do you know what? I feel like I want to analyze myself today. It is too much because I don't know you. Mm. So there's an element of like... Like, thanks for being honest. But thanks, but you lot. know... You yeah. know, there's a yeah. bit of like, are we in the, are you in my circle of trust? <laughs> yeah. Because I don't feel that, you know? Yeah. Um, so there's, I don't know if I can, if I can handle that. There's an element of me that I've got to be honest. I don't know if I want like the dynamic with a romantic partner to just be so, k k k k k it's okay for it to just be a bit softer, a bit like lure me in, yeah. you know, mm. lure me in. Yeah. And I also feel like there, there are many different dynamics. So when he was speaking, it almost made it seem like this is the way that it is. And like, like do I do, do, do I know, like this changes or this can be different over over periods of time because I feel like definitely age is going to also determine how you approach sex. Mm -hmm. Your even your social status is going to determine if you're someone who, for example, you're fighting for your life like for finances daily. Mm -hmm. You you ain't got no time to be even like sex will be the last thing on your mind kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I th I feel like I just, it reminded me of the conversation we had with um Rick's poet mm -hmm. and how it was like, this is what masculinity has been painted mm -hmm. as, but actually masculinity can be very, can look very different. I don't know if you saw the video he posted on his mm -hmm. feed the other day. He was dancing yeah, in, like a cute, in a cute little dancing. nightgown. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? That can be masculinity mm -hmm. too. It might not be the one that I adhere to. It might yeah. not be the one that I find attractive, mm -hmm. but that's masculinity to him. Yeah, there's and a difference. Yeah, and people, and it, it kind of just needs to be like, you actually, what Madeka was saying, and it was like the complete opposite of Rick's. Yeah. Maybe we should have both of them ooh. on our podcast. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Did it, did because ding. this sort of like, if this is the Masimba, and if it's not like this, this is this really a real man versus this one who's just like, no, he could literally be like what you, he would call a Mbwa, or what was the, uh, the lowest part? Masifa, and then? There was Ma? There was Masimba. Then there was Mafisi, and then there was something. Yeah. Anyway, Makat, the, the, Makat, Makat, I think. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, maybe what he would call this one is what someone else finds like this is so masculine. This is what I like, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. I, I guess, like, like mm -hmm. we, the way you uh, would kind of put all that together is that there's a difference between this is and this can be, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. it's like, if, when you're listening, even though when somebody's saying this is, mm. you, you are, you're happy to add this can be. Yeah. Because truly it's like this can be this way because mm. it can also be another way. Exactly. Yeah. I also can imagine that if if I am in a phase in my life where I'm experiencing like maybe a sexual awakening mm. and like really getting into like the sexual part of me and what and I'm like really just like sexually charged, I would probably like interact with the Masimba and be like, yes, mm, this is what I want and really like that. But if I'm in a different phase where it's like I want something something else i want gentle loving gentle i want whatever like oh my god listen slow down slow down <laughs> so um the, by the way after we had the conversation mm -hmm. um on the cameras we had like another hour conversation with him like yeah. we had lunch eating and we cookies went deep and salad and deeper <laughs> and deeper and deeper into yeah, like his yeah. views he gave a lot more examples mm. so it's like we got a true picture yeah of like really how this um how this is like articulated in real life exactly. um so it's like when some, some of our views is from like both both of those, of those the yeah, private conversation exactly. and the one on mm, there yeah. so one of the things sorry go ahead you go ahead one go. of the things that i felt was problematic and somebody actually quoted it and everyone has kind of been quoting and tagging us on yeah. this if you're falling for bullshit you deserve bullshit no, I don't believe that. No. And I don't want you to believe that. Mm -hmm. There is a difference between you might be a participant in the misery that is in your life and mm -hmm. it's okay to have to take accountability. Like you saw this person, this person was lying to mm -hmm. you and you continued to ignore your intuition and follow. There's where you're responsible. You're not responsible for your pain. You're responsible for how the interaction came to be. Yeah. But you never deserve yeah. terrible things to happen to you exactly. and because especially when you're young you do believe that sometimes mm -hmm. i i immediately want to debunk that immediately. immediately and that was one of the comments at the top where i was just like no no, <laughs> no. because that that's Don't. giving first of all victim blaming it's yeah. like saying well, if you fell for somebody luring you into a corner so they could take advantage of you sexually you, you deserved deserve it that. no, no. People, there are bad no. people who take advantage of someone's like trust. There are people who it's like you, maybe even it's the first time that you're falling for <laughs> bullshit, so to speak. Obviously, if it's the 10th time and the bullshit has been coming looking exactly yeah. the same, mm. maybe at that point, it's kind of like take accountability. Yeah, it's all about but you are accountable, yeah. but deserving? No. no. Absolutely no. not. And the problem with that also is that it's very women focused because it's usually women who well, fall for the bullshit, yeah, you know, kind no. of thing. So it's like... 
Yeah. Yeah, that was also problematic. Let me say one positive thing actually that I I got from the episode or one thing that I agreed with is that being raised in the African culture even a, 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 a podcast like ours like just TMI where we even say the word sex, orgasm, vagina is already earth shattering <laughs> groundbreaking so coming from that kind of context where it's just like we are the african culture is more on the side of like don't talk about this don't be too forward don't be too forthright it can be really refreshing to have voices and and you know like uh, people like him who give an alternative so which is much. like this one is too much on that extreme Moises is also very much on that extreme mm. but i love the fact that now it's just it adds to the conversation it adds to the literature that somebody can look into for you to decide what feels right for me mm-hmm. you know where do i feel is that yeah. too much for me or like maybe what can i get from there what about the african culture do, am i comfortable with mm. and where do i feel comfortable now settling into yeah. you know yeah. so i like that i like the fact that there's the polarizing element yeah. so that it's just like this that extreme this that extreme what feels right for you from either side what feels right for you in the middle because we then have to be in extremes yeah. and i actually mm. like that he exists and i same. love that he exists same. and he is loud about it and mm. his platform like just i just love that he exists yeah. another thing that i absolutely loved about the episode is that he he put responsibility mm. on how we get pleasure on men too yeah. because it's always like oh women this women this especially that that one you guys keep reposting mm. you kept reposting sorry it was about um if your if my vagina is my vagina is not loose your girth is your girth is just not matching one thing. and let me <laughs> tell you it's like those kind of things remind women to not have like this kind of shaming dynamic when mm. they when a man tells them that they're not good enough to so do you're not 20 enough you're not that you're not simulating the vagina it gets gave us or it gave even you guys some yeah. vocabulary to use when men are attempting to mm-hmm. remove themselves from the responsibility of giving us pleasure exactly. so there was a lot of that and to be honest the center of what he does is bringing women pleasure and exactly. what's this podcast about thank you what's this podcast about thank you so they so like the yeah. underlying of what he does is mm. so supportive and so feminist of him yeah, to actually. kind of really bring women's pleasure to the forefront mm. and make men know that actually sometimes you you might be falling short up your game and i'm here for that thank you i here love that. that actually so mm, much mm. yeah i one of the things that i think stood out for me also from that conversation is um uh the, i think it's even based on a comment that someone has said here about like uh let's all agree as much as we like what Maurice is saying we don't have to believe and do everything he says mm-hmm. but we can incorporate some of it in our lives mm-hmm. and since that episode I've been thinking about like what about what he said mm-hmm. can I incorporate in my life or like was like an, an eye opener for me and mm-hmm. for me the the conversation we had about how the play date element and like how mm-hmm. like you you go on holidays just the two of you but you're calling the kids and you're doing what I actually took a, a very good <laughs> look inward Because you I, always post about I, it, ooh, kids time. Kids, what I have literally vacation. no sooner, no sooner have we arrived there, it's like let's check on the kids. And Zach is also guilty of that, yeah. so so guilty of that. Mm-hmm. He can spend an hour mm-hmm. on call with the kids. Me, I'm like I've checked there, okay, but like him, he can spend really long. Mm-hmm. And so when I went home, I actually had a conversation with him. I was just like, babe, if we do staycations, let's do them properly let's yeah. do them nice your mom is calling just send a message and be like i'll call you back or whatever we can't be in the middle of something mm. and then it's like we are picking up calls from moms and our daughters mm. and whatever like no actually no so mm. for me i that's like one of the key things that i yeah. got from the episode of that I was just like this is something i can inculcate in my life to increase my own pleasure yeah. and i'd actually love to hear from you guys you can leave in the comments something from the conversation that you um feel like you have added to your own life or like you would want to add to your own sexual life that would improve it yeah yeah for me what i took what, what i took on is actually that like masimba element mm. and not to say i want to be in that extreme but i thought about the dynamic of like dating right now mm. which is just like somebody comes in and they're like kind of giving me this playbook of who they want me to believe that they, they are, are right? right and then mm. i'm doing the same and then the the longer you date the more it seems like we we it's like we're getting to know each other but it feels like the picture you're painting that the person who you are don't seem to be that consistent is because we all want to put our best foot forward but i was thinking it's like what other ways of dating can i incorporate into my dating life where what is being brought out of the person mm-hmm. is their true self right. so that we can get to like the true who you are mm-hmm. faster maybe not necessarily about like i'm going to fuck you so just chill but <laughs> from the perspective of like i can see your vulnerability you know like that 
that and I actually listened to another podcast that really did emphasize on kind of getting to the vulnerability of who you are faster mm -hmm. instead of like you're in this talking stage and no one really knows anyone because yeah. everyone is putting their best version of it so mm -hmm. I, I I like that element of just like can we just be up front yeah. what, what, what is what is going to happen here so that everyone can chill the fuck out a little bit so I, mm. I had a question about that mm. so me, me I, I'm not in the dating mm. scene so mm. like this information is not going to help me mm. it might help one of you but yeah. I feel like the, the concept of so there's an element to dating that I see as like what he was saying is like a lot of people pretend and they they like are presenting like a different version of like who they actually are and there's an element which to me is just like it is naturally human to want to be to like present the best side of you which is not it's not necessarily pretentious mm -hmm. and you're not like trying to dupe anyone but it's like this i want to like now when you enter a new relationship you can be a new lydia yeah you you don't have to be like the lydia who you were before like mm -hmm. if you are like you've been working on your let's say you are pathological liar mm -hmm. she's not mm -hmm. but let's say you were mm -hmm. and it's like now you're trying not to be a pathological liar so now you've embodied like okay i am not a pathological liar mm -hmm. e even in this one you're not going to lead with your weaknesses yeah. you're not going to lead with the things you're struggling with you're going to obviously lead with like the best side of you yeah. which i feel like is like a normal natural thing so i wonder like how how easy is it for for people who it's like when you meet someone and not even necessarily even dating even just when you meet anyone anywhere yeah. for you to be like this is who i am when okay. you haven't shown me that I can trust you with being vulnerable, with my with yeah, my vulnerability. So the way I would say mm. it is not necessarily about like what you're saying, is like creating an environment that allows the vulnerable side of you to come to surface. And what I'm saying is actually a, a, a mix of that conversation with Morris and this podcast. I'll actually have people will put it down. And it's basically this incredible dating um uh, she's um a dating expert she's like science backed and she was basically saying that if you look at how you've been dating what side is coming out of you most so for example majority if not all the dates i've had have been sit down dinners right and what side is coming out of that is this is the side i excel in most speaking i literally get <laughs> paid podcaster <laughs> you know so that obviously brings out this kind of mm. expert side of me and it's fine. It is a part of me. It's true. This is what I do. Mm. However, is that the side that I necessarily want to come out? So one thing I've said, and I've actually switched it mm. since listening to that podcast, is I am not going on any more dinner dates. Nope. I want to do things like fun things. I want my fun side to come out more. Mm -hmm. Like doing something that's like bowling or like just something yeah. a bit more competitive allows me to see how you are. Can you lose without freaking out? Yeah. Like it allows me to see you. Can you and you to a girl. Exactly. And not be like, so it's like mm -hmm. you're not curating yourself then yeah. you're vulnerable you're being yourself right. in an authentic way so i would say that that's the balance because i don't expect anyone to just be like here i am as i am yeah. last yeah. week da, 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 i don't expect that even from myself mm -hmm. but there are ways where i can see glimpses of like who you are what mm -hmm. motivates you what brings you joy when you're most relaxed while we are dating that even you're not aware you're, you're right. showing yeah. yeah i think that's the balance i think so okay fine i like that and mm. i feel like like you see you naturally i feel like you're the the kind of person who can be able to express yourself really well. Yeah. I feel like sometimes if someone is not able to express themselves, sometimes it's just like they are not lying, but it's just like it just didn't occur to them to say certain things or yeah. like to be a certain. And not way. everyone is a great speaker, exactly. but maybe mm -hmm. and not everything you need to be open and vulnerable about. Like yeah. I don't need also in the first day to be like, wow, I really want to squeeze your nipples yeah. right now. I want to like, I, like yeah. there can also be like etiquette. There can also be like boundaries. And there can also be like of trust. Right? So, yeah. Exactly. Like, do, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah south is just like yeah yeah another yeah. thing actually my therapist told me is that um there's somebody who i was dating who really challenged mm. my sense of vulnerability i mm. thought i was a vulnerable bitch it turns out i am fucking no it turns out that i hold my cards very close to my Do chest you baby bitch i didn't know <laughs> i did not know and it's because you meet levels right, right. and then so i was telling my uh, my therapist about how they're challenging my vulnerability because like they're able to be so vulnerable or whatever and she was just like mm. and I how was are like, they being so vulnerable like say like what is it i mean like no they definitely were sharing so many things that were very personal i was just like okay we are really in that territory. But yeah. what she told me is that some people don't struggle showing who they are. So you think you are getting this really vulnerable person, but it's because from your level of what you consider to be vulnerable, it's vulnerable. And maybe they're giving you nothing. 
because to them that's just what they do just like how we do people feel like we are so vulnerable sharing on social media but do you feel that half the time right. no you're being yourself and that's not a part of you that you are you tend to be afraid to share you're right so somebody where, yeah. else's bar is here mm. so then you go away thinking they're being so vulnerable i'm challenging myself i should be more or maybe they just do this this is just what they do so yeah. you can't always determine someone's level of vulnerability at all mm. especially when you don't know them enough so it's like i've changed that i don't say it's like oh wow you really share something personal you must be vulnerable i yeah. don't know maybe yeah. you said that to the last date you had two minutes ago mm. you know you you can't always measure it that way but i feel like it's i would prefer the the version of you that is not curated through your mouth i want to see it more like that which so takes that's time it. yes and mm. also different environments let's go mm. like let's hang out at a bar like what are you like when there are other girls who look hot you know like let me see you more than let me hear you from your mouth yeah. including me because yeah. i feel like sometimes because i articulate myself so well and i can present myself so well i come off as perfect and i've seen that dynamic so often where like this guy looks like they're really trying to impress me or they or sometimes even intimidated by me mm -hmm. but it's because i know how to tell someone who Lydia yes, is in yeah. like the most wa wonderful well words. packaged way I don't want to yeah. do that anymore let's go to Karura let me fall off the bike so you see a different version exactly. so yeah no more no more dinner dates I like that I like that concept yeah. of like I mean some to a lot of people it's like they'll see us on social media and it's like that's oversharing but to us it's just like yeah I mean it just makes <laughs> sense and also um what how we determine like what to share and what not share i feel like naturally like let's say when you're posting something on social media you always feel like mm, do i feel comfortable sharing yeah. this do i want to share this and i guess maybe with dating it's the same it's like mm -hmm. do i feel comfortable sharing this or do i not because if you feel hesitation then yeah. obviously you're not going to share it yeah. you know kind of thing mm -hmm. and maybe some people just don't feel that way and they don't yeah. and some people take more time mm -hmm. so yeah i feel like that I, i wanted that i want a less bullshit way of dating exactly basically yeah mm -hmm. and maybe even for them what they're sharing which you feel is like super vulnerable yeah. there's probably a another door they, to unlock that I'm way sure. it's like the, the, that's, that's like, the yeah, true that, vulnerability for this them this one is for everyone they told the watchman that they were abused and at 12 yeah thinking, wow he's really he's like really open. Me no. my, so is he, he has not he okay. has not okay so um mm. somebody gave us a because we were saying how do we really want a masimba there's mm. somebody who sent in their um their message because they have a masimba mm. so this is irene 3430 who's saying my partner of two years is a Masimba. We met two years ago in a club, then ended up hooking up that night. When I tell you, I was mind blown. I didn't believe that such such sex pleasure exists. I kid you not, one day on 8th of October, we were baking and I remember I organized no, I orgasmed and squatted like eight times that night. And at some point, I think I saw the stars like I was in heaven. That was the first time I experienced that. So we printed key holders with 8th of October on it. It's true that what it, what Morris says, Masimbas are not sweet talkers. Kwanzaa mine is Masimba and Kikuyu. Oh dear God! When I tell you, you see I, that's that's listen. I got okay. mm -hmm. I got into a relationship without him ever flirting with me. I always tell him he was handed this relationship on a silver platter brackets low key he is a loving, loyal, and kind and caring guy. He makes me feel secure. I really struck gold. Your man is Kikuyu. Tell us, how is it going? Update. Well, he definitely flirted with me. Mm -hmm. He definitely, like, was a sweet talker mm -hmm. and, like, you know, like, definitely did what he needed to, mm -hmm. to get me. Mm -hmm. And you see, okay, I, you see, I like what she's explained. Like, mm -hmm. at the end, the way she's qualified, he's kind, he's loving, he's mm -hmm. loyal. I like that that has balanced out from the before of, like, she handed him the relationship on a silver platter and mm -hmm. it's like, he's not a sweet talker. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just kind of, I, um, I just, I feel like, we can't put, uh, like package and say if a man is like this, it means he's a masimba and therefore you're going to have this kind of relationship and the sex is going to be amazing. Because maybe that man who's talking to you, maybe he's just a loser. Maybe he just doesn't like you or something you know like maybe he's you're actually not going to end up being like in this kind of relationship like and for me it's just like that putting that it's this kind of man who looks exactly like this and so someone might be in a relationship where it's actually toxic because all he does is give you the best sex of your life but actually yeah. isn't like and kind to you he's not a sweet talker so that means yeah, when you say mean? do I look fat today he's just like actually yeah. I've been meaning to, to really <laughs> take this off my chest because those those back <laughs> have been killing girl. me yeah 
no <laughs> like there's a level of honesty there's also a level of like i love you and protect your feelings mm-hmm. which is not um, we are pretending it's just like a i care about you and i'm <laughs> treating you like a little baby bird which is how i want to be treated like a little baby bird yeah no i thank agree you yeah baby yes you are a little baby bird and you do deserve to be cared for thank that way you, i already you. know i'm a baby bird so thank you that yeah. kind of upfront super intense way is not going to work for me right. but even with the sweet talking as i said i'm i'm wanting a bit more like what's real here like there's no point of this dance that we are doing if mm. neither of us actually get to know each other because when you present yourself to be perfect and I present myself to be perfect neither of us actually know some know exactly. that and the person who I thought was so vulnerable when I look back now I'm just like I don't think I knew him mm. at all you know yeah, so but you knew those things which yeah. you were just like, wow it's so mm. exactly yeah also as we listen to like the Masimba, Mafisi, Makat, Ma, whatever, and people's different lovers and the way people are, we are all allowed to like different kinds of men. We are all are allowed to be attracted to different kinds of men. We are all allowed to want a man to do or say certain things. And there's absolutely no shame in that. You don't have to now defend that now because your man is like more soft spoken and you know he's the kind who is just like he's going to whisper in your ear that he wants to have sex with you as opposed to shouting, You, Lydia, I want you now. Get on the floor. Lie down. Open the legs. Yeah, I mean, you see, there's that one. And there's someone who will be super attracted to that and that's okay. Yeah. But we don't all have to be attracted to that one kind of we man. We don't. But let me tell you, for 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 the plot, for, for, the for TMI, plot. I am I'm literally going to lean into Amasimba, just one, and then we see how. And it when goes. you come here crying, by the way, I'm not at, at Lydia. We'll only shoot one episode because Lydia is emotionally struggling. Nope, I've done that once. I'm not doing it again. Thank you. How dare you bring up <laughs> yeah, my dark no, I'm deep sorry. past? You're affecting the bag. Okay, <laughs> Beryl had to give us concessions during that season. It's like, it's okay, I won't charge you for that other episode. Bear, She's so sacrificing sweet. money for you to cry. <laughs> so, guys, should I go experiment with the Masimba or not? Because listen listen oh, to what she's... God. She's threatening to leave me, Do guys. Do it after this, our next TMI event. Yeah. Because like we don't have time. We don't have that much time in between. Please, next year. Okay, <laughs> next year I'll experiment, Thank guys. you. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> Um, so this is Alan. This is a, I, I found this interesting because it's a guy, um, Alan Otieno, and he said clearly this guy has learned the women's psychology, and I think he mostly plays the tune ladies want to hear. I, I feel like we. I feel like most of us were triggered. I yeah, don't know. Like if that's we what want we want. To want to but hear. we were intrigued. We were oh, triggered, but intrigued. intrigued. You see, it's like yeah. those ones of like what? Yeah. And then he continued to say, but for real sex or relationship advice, not really there to be honest. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's Kenya. You have to know how to put your food on the table at the end of the day. If you know, you know. Mm-hmm. So I agree with him as far as you see the elements. The, the advice he was giving, so to speak, was purely sex based. It was only about sex. Mm-hmm. How that interplays with. Uh, marriage with um family with like even in your dating like a relationship the other issues you could be facing mm. your age your um physiology whatever how that sex element interplays with all these other elements of real life mm-hmm. i feel like that element was missing yeah. because this one was like sex almost like in a bubble like mm-hmm. just sex for sex sake or like yeah. sex as a um a tool or like a resource on its own but the reality is that sex of often comes and like is interpreted and is experienced in the midst of so many other in underlying issues as mm-hmm. a result of it things like trauma yeah. things like um just like your background things like you know your education level things like that like there's so much more so i think i do agree with this guy it's like th- he definitely wasn't here to give to relationship that. advice no, he was here relationship to just no. purely be about sex sex, sex specifically and so yeah. I, I even think that the people who um go to him probably for like um the sessions or like mm-hmm. you know to have like um the joint he said even does couple sessions or whatever yeah. i think definitely that person is not going there for like oh we are having issues with like our uh, in-laws yeah it's just sex yeah which i feel yeah. like sometimes can give like kind of a limited view of what's happening with someone mm. actually there's something i saw he had posted the other day and he was like um something like um i think i sent it to you mm. it was like basically saying that this kind of emotional <laughs> aspect of relationship is just kind of rubbish Boring and it down idiotic. whereas for <laughs> real like if i were only looked at sex from yeah. my perspective from like just a physical perspective i would probably think i have a problem because if my emotions yeah. if like there's something going on with me emotionally it really affects what's going on with me physically mm. and how i show up in sex so it's like it does give limitations because other people are affected in different ways as far as sex whereas the way he's saying it's really no if your vagina is stimulated you you're good to go so 
<laughs> yeah. Someone said, Murugi, you sound like you're rethinking marriage. And I want to I want to just qualify some of the feelings, the, the emotions, because even after now the episode ended, mm. the conversation we had with him after, I was really just like, Wow, you're in a cage, Whoa. You're trapped, <laughs> and it's over. You're doomed. Yeah, it and was. I, it was so extreme. It was really extreme. Really and extreme. it's like you see now when I when we were, as we were having the conversation, I was like, if sex truly only sex was what would determine whether or not a person stays in a marriage, I would say a hundred percent of marriages will probably at some point break down. Yeah. But the reality is that marriage is so like the value of marriage to me is way more than sex. Like sex is such a crucial factor, mm. but but my God, the value of marriage to me is not just the sex. Like yeah. the the being together, the mm -hmm. partnership, mm -hmm. the life we are building, mm -hmm. the companionship, mm -hmm. the support. The like, there's just so much more to it that yeah. I can't. There's no way that even if we were like not to ever have sex, like from now till the rest of our lives, mm -hmm. this is still someone I would still want to be married to. This man. Oh, that's this strong. is like yeah, I would still want from to be married. Joe. From me, from Moruki. Yo, listen, that's yeah, strong, exactly. No, and I get it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like if if marriage was just sex, mm. absolutely, there would be no reason to get <laughs> <No>. married. <laughs> <laughs> that, that reason will be in the bin and not yeah. to even condone having bad sex in marriages it's just like as Joey's saying there seems to be so many moving parts mm -hmm. that it's like if that and especially like for some of us whose sex is like too intertwined with their feelings and stuff yeah. and traumas we and would just say this one yeah. out we would have to say it out exactly I would love to see in the comments guys how many of you would actually consider being in a non-monogamous relationship or a non-monogamous marriage, because I feel like that's going to be telling. Because, I mean, really, Maurice, that's pretty much what he was saying, is that in the long term, non-monogamy is the way to go for, like, most people, you know? And the way, as so, far, funny enough, the way I think is that the, as people get older, they get more settled in monogamy, mm, right? Because, first of all, the physical fucking to be... <laughs> energy to be going around fucking everyone is kind of limited, just physically, right? Then you probably have more responsibilities. A lot of men tend to kind of have be higher in their positions in career. Actually, a lot of people tend yeah, to be higher. Right. So it's just like you have more going on. You're more stress so i actually see or what i've seen mm -hmm. in like a lot of couples who have had the um the luxury of seeing them like get older it's just like oh yeah this is like this uncle who used to kind of like be a player all the time but and now, it's like as now he's getting older it's like he's settling now he's like at family events i've seen that people tend to lean more into mm -hmm. one partner just out of tiredness sometimes it's our fatigue fatigue <laughs> pure fatigue if you can only have one sexual session a month Man, i mean it's like your wife let it be your wife <laughs> let it be your wife you know you just kind of resign there are still people who are like oh no they get even yeah. hotter and they want even more but no i've seen uh, re real life examples of people more calming down and settling more into monogamy as they've gotten older exactly. that's why you hear all of those stories of like you know women who are just like you know i persevered in my marriage who was cheating with everybody my sister Sister, my da -da -da -da. <laughs> the but house now and he's literally. just tired <laughs> he's just tired and that's okay that's fine he's that's settled fine down too. and he's relaxed but it's always seen as this like oh 20 years of misery and then he gets better and like it's this miracle yeah and you stood by his and side stood all by his through side. sometimes it's just like he's tired <laughs> i tell you at 60 you're not going around like as but much so as do you think people who are babas are people who are babas are 60 yeah no I get it there are people as I'm saying who truly go the other direction which yeah. is just like the more money I have the bigger now I get the more I want to sleep with like all yeah. these there's people who do that mm -hmm. but there's also others who settle in exactly a lot of people um, picked up on this statement that he said about like, why are we talking about architecture in Italy when you're about to have disastrous sex in South B? My I, God. I support it. I howled. I support it. Howled. Every time like I say, why? <laughs> but you see that one. I feel like also let's just see it in context of what we are. No, I get it. Like honestly, like being that I'm in the dating scene, yeah. like the conversations I've had. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Really. And you do, you can't even help it. You can't help it. You just find yourself having this conversation. You're just like, what is this really about? What are we talking about? What are we about? actually <laughs> doing here? For real, what is it we are doing here? <laughs> and for me also, the context of 
if there are things in your relationship, marriage or whatever, which clearly need some help, which clearly need some support, mm. if your sex is indeed disastrous, mm. we need to be talking about that. Yeah. We need to have that conversation. And I think I feel like his approach, Moise's approach to like being open about like what we are feeling, what you want your man to do, yeah. what you what you would want support to experiment, that. whatever. I really support that. Mm. It's like, yeah, let's talk. Yeah. Let's just say I've not been enjoying sex lately. Mm. Can you do something else? 100%. Can we try something else? Else, mm-hmm. you know yeah kind of thing i really i appreciated that hey my god yeah any everyone's edges all the comments are just like wow you ladies were speechless you are speechless guys we were absorbing we are we were absorbing we actually we were not absorbing. yeah <laughs> yeah there's a guy in fact i think this episode had the most number of male commenters even Lydia. someone told me that, the, yeah. that she's been telling her man to watch him i watch him i but this one he sent to her he sent to her after she's been like, let's what? watch it. That's what he, he sent. Thank to you. Her. Thank you. Now, another guy, Emmanuel Ojode, responded and said, Truth be told, no lady is ever interested in Masimbas until they see what you can do. Now, at a year, your mind blowing sensation, Hajazoya Anaeza Hepa. I get it. I yeah. totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, like Masimbas, wouldn't it benefit you to just have a softer approach? Because you would get more. Let me no? speak for Maurice. That's nonsense. Yeah. That's stupid. And you fall for you bullshit. <laughs> you deserve <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> oh my God. I'm actually... <laughs> You know, before that episode, I used to be like, Lydia, we are just so open. We are just so... so what a we are close so, book we are such I am. Free thinkers. We are so we are such, we are so liberal. <laughs> are, are we? we? <laughs> are we? Yeah, no, actually. Yeah, anyway, I, I do agree, especially in our context. Definitely, I wouldn't say that we are not used to Masimbas. So obviously, right now, when you've been told like, oh, if a guy just approaches you and says, you know what, I would really like to have sex, you're going to be like, that guy was just like, he didn't even have decorum yeah. and whatever. Obviously, yeah. that's the context in which we have been raised. So of course, we wouldn't. And maybe sometimes if it's like, Ati, she's not used to that mind blowing sensation. And, and as a hipper, maybe that could actually be the yeah. case. It could be overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she's be. maybe you're not at the stage in your life where you're able, like you're getting now addicted to this man. You want to see him twenty four seven. And let me tell you, actually, the maybe. best sex I ever had. I actually needed like it felt like I needed forty eight hours to recover. I've got a job. Please, this That's is not it. all I can do. So it's like I don't know if you even fit my schedule because I've got gym in the morning. I don't know if I'm going to make it because you've finished me. Yeah. yeah. No, there there are downsides. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, a lawyer called Anifa, and I know she's a lawyer because in her picture she has like those wig things. She said, "Um, I didn't feel him to be to be honest. He doesn't give practical solutions, and if I was married, I wouldn't go to him. In my opinion, mm. I also would say that if I had had this kind of like heard that conversation in my dating life, mm. I feel like it would have been more beneficial to me mm. then mm. than." As a married person, yeah, I would say the like mm. as you get older, what happens is that you know yourself more, you understand what you want, mm. those kind of things. So it, it enables you to pick a partner that way. But mm. if you picked your partner now, like you are twenty, I was when I got married, yeah, twenty six, right? So twenty six mm. now you are 34 mm. it's like so much of you has changed and they still Absolutely. like this kind of basis underneath that's still what you chose each other from yeah. so it's not a uproot and just change your entire marriage on this exactly. it's like it's softer as you said yeah. it's like what can I incorporate versus mm. not radical change exactly it's like there's more that goes into this marriage than just sex absolutely mm-hmm. and i guess at different points in your life also your your more sex is a bigger deal to you at different points in your life yeah for some people it's when they're younger for some people it's like the sexual supreme at like mm. early 20s mm. for some people like here 40s is really where it's at yeah apparently in fact i'm really looking forward to my 40s yeah and I love that social media has come so that we can see what it looks like to be 40 because you used to think used all to these petrified. ages are the worst yeah here we are. I literally it's, follow people who are even 50 and I'm just like, I like, wow, look at your life. life. Is They're long. like, yeah. Life is life long. Life is long, guys. Mm-hmm. If you live that long, we pray. Yeah. But like, I can see how sometimes for some people, maybe it's like you're experiencing your sexual awakening. Mm-hmm. Maybe at that point now your marriage has failed. So now you're able to be mm-hmm. single properly and that's when now you're starting yeah. to experience it. You're just like, oh, I want a masimba or whatever. Mm-hmm. For someone else, it could be your 30 and you're just when like, you know Um... I think I could be in it now. Really? Yeah. I feel like mine was like my late 20s. Mm. Oof. You was just like Oof. doing what you needed to do. My <laughs> late 20s. It's like it, it just got me to understand what I want. My yeah. late 20s and even like my earlier 30s. It's just now that I'm not like so 
here she's still but in I, her early I, 30s. She's I think i'm still there yeah, little, I'm, yeah i'm just not in the practice yeah. mode as such <laughs> but yeah those were the years where it's just like i opened my eyes and i landed like i aligned with people who also helped me do that because right. it's true who you're with definitely also makes an impact helps, yeah. yeah for me 30 upwards actually 20s for me it was just zero yeah the nonsense work 30 upwards have been amazing and i just feel like it keeps getting better yeah. because the more i trust myself the more i even experience conversations like this that show me like there's more you could actually be experiencing there's more that you could be seeing perhaps there's yeah. elements that you haven't thought about or whatever mm -hmm. conversations you could have which could change everything for yeah. you yeah 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 damn how, how long are we talking okay that's enough that's great yeah okay mm -hmm. fine um <laughs> a lot of people were like the intro of that episode i did not the introduction being long and amazing i.e basically our intro was super super short it was and short. still that episode ended up being an hour 32 minutes yeah crazy this has oh got to be one of let me tell you this here guys we are content creators so no whether you fall on the side of supporting everything that morris is saying or you fall on the other side there's a reaction it's something that's making you feel it's making you move it's making you think it's it's making you just shake things up and that's yeah. precisely what we want to do here and especially because we lean towards emancipating women sexually these kind of conversations are is is what we like having exactly. we want you guys to have as many options of perspective as possible so that you can be choosing your life yeah. i don't want anyone to be having bad sex because they think that's the only way i want you to know there's this side and you can sub prescribe to it if you want to. Exactly, okay? yeah. yeah. There's someone here who said, just like my last comment mm. about the guy who like now you said that he was like very vulnerable mm. and open. This Someone is saying, she's called Carol. A guy showed me his three log books on our first date. <laughs> he goes on saying, he, he went on to say his recent ex-girlfriend has refused to return his Subaru. So now is that like too what? much information? No, what, what or is about it... that? Do I even need, why do I need to know that? I don't know. Let's say the conversation went like this. Let's say we are sat here, then an alarm went off, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, yeah." Let me just like switch off the alarm. And you're like, "Oh wow, you drive that Range Rover," and then he'll be like, "Yeah, I, I do." Do you want to see my logbook? What the fuck? Do? <laughs> when uh, when would that be something I need to? But see? But when they're not showing logbooks, you're like, "Is it even his car?" No, no <laughs> one, no one ever said that. <laughs> ever <laughs> yes and then people have replied to her comment and like there's someone who's saying he's a keeper definitely keep that on <laughs> guys guys yeah so you see it's like yeah oh, mm. no honestly for me mm -hmm. i feel like there's a part of emotional intelligence that is about knowing when and yeah. where mm -hmm. and only because you are sharing with me it's not a brick wall, so you can't just say anything. There's going to yeah. be a reaction on this side. So I like a good in-between of, I see this person is sharing some... There's a sweet spot. I saw a sweet spot where it's just like you're sharing enough that I can see some elements that I know you're trying to open up. Mm. And also, I really don't need to know some your darkest, deepest secret right now. You also, know? do you have boundaries? What I would say is that if somebody is vulnerable too fast, mm. I, I tend to feel like, do you have like is there a bar of entry to what you value because if anybody can hear these really important things do you value them mm. and so, so are, are you actually being vulnerable and are you expecting me then to, to do also the do the same because for me there's there's yeah, definitely a bar of there entry there should for be sure. i feel like it's good to have a bar mm. of entry before giving something that you value mm. you know so i feel like i feel like there's a dance yeah. there for sure and also for me i also feel like there's a feeling like there's when someone shares something and you kind of feel uncomfortable me i trust that feeling yeah there are times when like you can see we've been talking for a while and when someone mm. says something you feel like wow it's so nice that they yeah. were able to say that mm. and it feels natural that they were able to share that with me because we've been talking about this element yeah. and now they whatever but if it's literally like date one and mm. it's just like you have now told me mm. all about your 12th to yeah i don't i mean i yeah. don't know there's a level of vulnerability that i know it's like for me because of how i operate emotionally mm. i like a certain level of vulnerability on a first date yeah but yeah it needs to be like they we are reading the room read the and room. it's easy for me to be a therapist in a dynamic so i i don't want too much of it because now i'm telling you about like what you need to do to solve that trauma with mm -hmm. your dad i you've you've sent him the link already to your I, therapist I, I contact list yeah, you've told him where you can get that. free therapy see i don't yeah. want to be that person you don't, you, <laughs> i don't want to but you want to help 
Huh? I think you don't help others. But see, I don't want that to be the dynamic <laughs> yeah. because now three years in, we are yeah. still doing that. Exactly. No. You're actually the one who's just helping. Yeah. Exactly. But anyway, guys, I've loved this conversation. <laughs> in fact, many times I feel like after we have a guest, we need to have a, an episode to discuss yes, I how it was so. the guest. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes it's like it's after some time that we're able to ruminate. And then also based off of the feedback mm. you guys give us, we yeah. also um, like are able to just like think through it and be like, how do I actually feel about yeah. it? And I hope by this conversation, you guys can see that we j- we really value this platform. Mm-hmm. We really value the relationship we have with you guys. Yeah. And we very much, especially because our audience, many of you guys are younger than us. We really see like this is an important Con- these are important, important conversations that we are having yeah. and we don't take it lightly like yeah. we will not come we don't want to feed you guys nonsense mm. so that we can have a whole generation of people who watch TMI and now you're all in bad relationships yeah. we literally know we don't and what we yeah. do is that mm. we respect the impact that we have yeah, so absolutely. it's like sometimes we fall short as mm. being human but generally speaking we are always thinking about like mm. what do we want to be feeding into this like coming generation like what do we want them to see mm. and also that like, you can only see one side but whatever it is that you're seeing it needs to be done in a way that gives you guys as much sense of freedom yeah. in choice as possible. Exactly. Yeah, Oof. we do. Hey, yeah. And do you know what? I love that about you as my partner because you can't make that in someone. You really You can't. really do get that. Like what we are doing here is it's important. important. Yeah. Yeah. And we respect oh it so much. Oh my gosh. Guys. Yeah. We do. Yeah. This is, yeah. I literally always see, especially maybe it's just because of Nelly, but I'm just like, what do I want Nelly to, to get out thinking, of this? Yeah, to be thinking and to be taking? No, I literally, yeah. yeah. I need you to know, like, you know, it's okay to feel this way. Mm. If you want to be with somebody who whispers in your ear at night while yeah. you are asleeping, I want it's okay. you to know. That's actually, it's our fine. sisters are our benchmark. Exactly. Yeah. Literally, they are. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Please leave any of your thoughts, your comments down below. I'm sure Maurice will be watching mm-hmm. this episode mm-hmm. and we will have him in future episodes. Mm-hmm. And then maybe we can. Have more of a conversation about the comments that you guys leave, yeah. so that it can also be a and a, the a Rick's poet and Morris girl. Someone even I said Morris and Biko and, and, and Benjamin, Benjamin Zulu, but I feel like Morris and Benjamin mm. kind of can be a bit similar mm. in that, like he, he, they 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 are these are very man dominant yeah, yeah. energy yeah. together. But yeah. yeah, we'll see, guys. We'll see, we'll see. guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. thank you so much for watching this episode, and we will see you in our next one. Bye. Bye.